Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another video. This one's a review video. Second suck of the salve. I've reviewed a Loran, I think that's how you pronounce it, MP3 player, Android MP3 player in the past, and it was actually really good. It exceeded my expectations. They're back with a new model. I don't know why, well, I know exactly why. MP3 player review videos do really well on my channel. I love dedicated mp3 players i still use them like i have one, at least one that lives in my backpack at all times one in the car and usually one at my work like desk and i'll just have there for like emergency music uh anyway <clears throat> this one should be interesting i looked at the pictures of this when they sent it to me and it just screamed finish tech if you saw my past video on the finish tech mp3 player it's basically could you imagine an iPod having a baby with a tank? So, yeah, this is uh, supposedly a beast of an MP3 player. I believe the price is around 100 bucks. I'll put a correction if I'm wrong. Uh, but oftentimes these MP3 players, if you just wait a little bit, they'll have like some kind of discount. And uh, yeah, if I can get like a discount code or whatever, I'll put it in the video description down below as well as links to buy this. And so hopefully I can get you guys a little bit off the top. The uh, model that they specifically sent me, if you see here, it is N2. It's really gold. Wow. Okay, gold and white themed. It's the N2 music player. Uh, 64 gigabytes, so so decent amount of flash. And yeah, uh, it has three here because it's it's a uh, three gigabytes RAM, six, 64 gigabytes flash, but then this is 96. So I wonder if it's 32 internal, 64 gigabyte memory card. That's probably what it is. Anyway, uh, some quick specs, 5-inch screen, and it is uh, 720p, which, like all the other Android MP3 players that I've seen, like the the one, like the, the sub 80-ish dollar ones, they're always, for some reason, 854 by 480. And it's probably just because that LCD is widely available. So this is actually a little bit higher resolution. This is technically HD. It is or isn't, depending on what your definition of HD is. Not going to open that can of worms. Anyway, yeah, it says 32 gig internal. Uh, Transflash card support. So SD cards, micro SD cards, up to one terabyte. That's cool. Uh, Bluetooth 5.0. It has dual band Wi-Fi. 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. That's awesome. And has an FM tuner. Supports every format under the sun. Of course, it's just Android. I want to say this is Android 8 or 9. I can't remember. It's somewhere. So it's not the newest version, but it's not such an old version that's crippled either. And I believe uh, my uh, contact told me that you can install apps on this. So that, if that's true, that's an absolutely huge thing. I think every Android MP3 player should have that feature. Uh, anyway, let's just get into it. I see a seam. And so I glossed over it. I think the biggest uh, thing going for this player is the battery capacity. And um, I'm not going to tell you it right now, but once I actually get in my hands and uh, show you how thick this boy is, relatively speaking, uh, I think it should be obvious. Very nice box. We have the player front and center with a nice little foam protector piece. And yeah, you can see roughly how big it is. This is a chunky boy. I'm not going to lie. It's not small. The reason why is this has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So I'm expecting this to last till the heat death of the universe. I don't know. We'll see. But um, yeah, it definitely feels like pretty hefty. So all glass and metal construction. It's uh, what you would expect. Uh, before we go into that any deeper, let's just see what else we get, what goodies. We have the bottom goodie box, and there's nothing else. Just, yeah, just the bottom of the box there. We have bunch of goodies we have the USB cable which actually looks better than standard fare Ooh, yeah so this is a little more expensive than other models but also so far it's looking like maybe slightly better accessories <laughs> because you have this uh, even though this is short this is only let's uh, get this out there this is only about six, probably about eight inches, actually, maybe 10 inches. 
So it's not the longest, but this is actually really nice. It's like aluminum, and there's like silicone rubber here, and it's braided. That's, that's actually a pretty nice USB cable. And we have what's going to be the headphones. These are always, eh. I'd, I'd almost prefer manufacturers not include cheap headphones at all. Just don't include any headphones. I have drawers of headphones that are much better than these. These are the Apple knockoff style with what appears to be lint already in the ear receptacle. Yeah, not going to stick that in my ear. So yeah, I only keep these uh, in case I, I need the cord. And I can just snip the uh, earbuds off the end and like patch if, if a cord breaks on another pair of headphones. Uh, but yeah, I basically just keep it for the wiring. But yeah, I'm never going to actually listen to music on these. I'm going to use proper IEMs. Okay, so we have what appears to be a screen protector. It's like a plastic screen protector. So that's nice in case the one, so these always come with one installed on the unit, but they give you a spare in case it gets scratched. That's really nice. We have a, ah, okay. Uh, so this being a portable music player, you're gonna wanna get music onto it and not everyone has a computer widely available and not everyone can open these packages easily. This guy's fighting me, yeah. Okay, here you go. So yeah, it is a USB Type-C to full size. So then you can plug this into this cable. Always get it wrong the first time. Uh, and makes it into a Type-C to Type-C cable. So I can plug this into my phone, which I'm recording on right now. And it'll show up as a drive and I can transfer music to it using a wired connection as fast as I can. So that's a neat idea. And so that also implies that, uh, well, hopefully this guy has on-the-go capability so I can plug thumb drives directly into it. I love doing that. You'll just take one of these adapters, take a thumb drive with MP3s, and use that to transfer the audio. That's my favorite way of getting music onto these. I don't need to faff around with my phone. I just store it on a thumb drive from my laptop and good to go. Seriously. Okay. We have the user manual, which is a user manual. There is a app. There's an app. <clears throat> wow, almost lost my voice. There's an app with a uh, QR code here called MiniShare. I've actually uh, seen that with a couple of these players. It's to wirelessly transfer music. If you didn't want to do this whole wire thing, you could just do it wirelessly by downloading MiniShare onto your, your phone. And then this already has it installed and it just creates like a wireless connection that you can send files. That's great and all, I'll probably not use that. I just like transferring because I have a, a crap ton of music. So I just use a, a thumb drive and transfer it all in one go. And that pretty much guarantees the fastest connection to the, the unit. Uh, probably easier, honestly, though, to just take a micro SD card, transfer all your music onto that. And then don't, you don't necessarily have to put music on the internal memory of this. Then you just put it on the micro SD card. I like doing that because I have many MP3 players and that means I can just instantly transfer music by just swapping the SD card. Okay, what everyone's been waiting for. Let's pop this puppy open. Oh god. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, like I was saying the thinnest tech kind of style of like robust machined aluminum. Like, look at this, like, especially these, like, corner bracket thingies really remind me of that. The gold surrounding the headphone jacks. Oh, yeah, by the way, double headphone jacks. Yes. <laughs> I will mostly only be listening to music alone because I don't have friends, but <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, I, I pretty much only listen to music alone anyway, so that's fine. But it's nice to have two jacks. That's cool. Uh, looks like a mic. A USB-C port, of course, for charging as well as data transfer, all that. There's a onboard speaker. This looks like the tiny little holes here for the speaker. Micro SD card, and this does come with a 64 gig card, it says. So I'm sure if I just pop that out, that will be a... Oh, they even branded it. Nice. Loran, a 64 gig uh, SDXC has like the class 10 symbol, I whatever. 
This is just going to be for MP3s. It doesn't need to be like ridiculously fast. But yeah, 64 gig memory card. Popping in there. Really nice. Oh, God, I love this like machined metal. And then the glass on the back. There is a like a screen protector on the back, even though there's no screen, but it's to protect the glass on the back. That's a nice touch. A lot of these MP3 players come with that pre-installed. And then we have the front. Oh yeah, by the way, octa-core MTK uh, processor. That's a CPU. Um, most of these, it's enough to do like web browsing and that kind of stuff. Maybe playing simple games, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't like emulation-wise. You're only going to be able to play maybe up to like Game Boy Color, maybe Game, well, probably Game Boy Advance. This will do, but probably not much more than that. But yeah, you can see here all the other specifications. We already went through 5,000 milliamp hours. Let's just uh, do the ASMR bit. Beauty. So unfortunately, this is the cleanest the screen will ever be because as soon as I touch it, I'm going to get fingerprints all over there. But it is a beautiful device. Wow. <laughs> smudge it up might as well just smudge it up anyway because it's going to be smudged anyway okay so on the side we have the power button and volume those are pretty much yeah those are the only physical buttons on here i've been saying this for years just it, it, any mp3 player manufacturer who's out there listening or watching this please put like Okay, you can have like these buttons here. Please on like the other side have play, pause, fast forward, rewind. Add physical buttons to those and I will thank you and throw money at you all day, every day. Uh, touch screen controls work and they're fine, but I want a device that I could use like without looking at it and possibly while it's in my pocket without having to take it out to look at the screen. So that would make it awesome. Buttons feel nice and clicky. I like that. If you can hear that. Yeah, very nice. Really leaning into like the gold and black motif. That looks really nice, especially with the headphones. Like it makes it look very high end. I believe Sony does that on their high res players as well. And to differentiate the power button, it has like gold inset lettering. So that's very nice as well. Yeah, nothing else on the player. So let's just see if this has a charge. And yeah, it's like a decent size. Uh, so yeah, it just turned on. Some kind of splash screen. There you go. Has a very schwanky looking uh, intro splash screen. <laughs> Let's uh, turn off the overhead lights so that you can maybe get a bit of a better view on that. So, just looking at this screen. Um, side viewing is really good. I don't know if this is an IPS. No, oh, don't want to move that around. But it looks really nice. I the only, so side to side looks really good. Top and bottom look really good. Like I can go almost 180 degrees and still see the screen. If you go off axis, it starts to like color shift. But then again, to be fair, you're generally not going to be looking at it at weird axes. So this probably is not IPS, but it's probably a very high, like a, a pretty decently high quality uh, TFT of some description. Uh, let's just see how bright this goes. So this is, this is like, mm, not super bright to my eyes. And yeah, it's like sitting below 50% brightness. If we turn this all the way up, uh, honestly, so sitting around here, yeah, it gets like twice as bright. Okay, fine. Uh, if I turn on my overhead lights, yeah. This is usable. Some other models that I've used, if you turn the brightness up all the way, it would still like wash out when you had a bright overhead light on it. But here you could see, having a bright overhead light, I could still see the display just fine. And yeah, getting real close. The pixel density looks pretty good. Yeah, this is 720p, so I can't really easily see the pixels. So yeah, display looks really good. It's it's better than that one particular model that I recently reviewed that I really wanted to like, but just the screen wasn't that great. Uh, but anyway, 
Screen's not everything for an MP3 player, but it's nice to have a good screen. Uh, especially when you're setting things up. So yeah, we have a uh, about section. Let's just see. Usually I can unlock developer no mode if I tap something enough times, maybe. No? Oh, did they disable developer mode? <laughs> Oh, well, I liked having access to developer mode because then you can change extra settings. Yeah, it looks like maybe they deactivated it. Because usually it's like either the build number or the Android version. If you keep pressing it, a thing will pop up saying press it like eight more times and then you'll unlock developer mode. But yeah, it looks like I can't access developer mode. Wah, wah. Anyway, we can schedule power on off, auto shutdown. Okay, whatever. Uh, date and time. Uh, this is actually the wrong time zone. I'll set this up later. Reset all options, languages, uh, security, apps and notifications, battery storage, which is saying, you can see here 64 gigabytes external, uh, 32 internal. And of that 32, uh, 6.54 is used by the operating system. So the rest you have to fill or just use an external SD card. They're dirt cheap. And you can get, like, ridiculously high capacities for cheap now. So there's no excuse for that. 85% uh, battery life came shipped with, which is almost ideal. We'll see how long this battery lasts. Uh, if this is really a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, that should last a pretty decent long amount of time. We do have battery saver. Uh, I'll try testing it with and without the battery saver. But with such a large battery, you shouldn't need to you know penny pinch battery power uh, i do want it to show me the percentage uh sleep after one minute activity yada 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 that's fine full last charge 20 days 13 hours six months minutes not six months uh okay uh we have our display bluetooth and wi-fi which i will have to set all that up Detected the SD card, and we have our own file manager here, and you can see I can go inside each one, etc., etc. So, we have a couple of apps installed. We have High Beam Music, which I've used before on, I forget the model of MP3 player, but I actually do really like the High Beam app. It's like really in-depth. I prefer, I personally use Double Twist a lot, but High Beam is definitely high on the list as well. Um, has Spotify, don't really stream, so don't care. Audible, don't really do the whole audiobook thing, so generally, so don't really care. Web browser, which ironically enough, they're using the Internet Explorer icon, the like old one, okay. AIMP, I believe that was like the video player, or maybe it's the audio slash video multimedia player software, meh. Uh, oh, I guess that's for audio, and there's just a video icon for a video app uh calendar settings file transfer uh gallery sound recording calculator and clock uh other than that we have the fm radio down here ebook which i'm never going to use so i'm just going to get rid of that file browser and music and we have no app drawer. All of them, for some reason, disable the app drawer. When you install an app, it just goes on the desktop always. Let's see if this will allow you to uh, create folders. This, yeah, no. I guess this is an older version of Android. I should have actually seen that when I uh, went in. It's Android 8.1. If newer Android, you can create folders by, like, dragging and dropping one on top of an... Oh, here, you can do it. Nope. Nope. It, uh, it lied to me. No, nope. okay, yeah, you can do it. It's just finicky, apparently. So that's cool. Good. So I like that you can at least organize the icons, seeing as you I don't, might not be able to hide it because there's no app drawer for it to go back into. So if you delete an icon, what happens to the app? You can't access it from here. But anyway, uh, yeah. I'm going to have to set everything up network-wise, get all my music on here, uh, going to use this fair warning I'm gonna use this probably for like close to a month I like to test my mp3 players pretty thoroughly and get yeah I will be back in a second for you guys but about a month for me so give me one sec 
first disappointing thing I found, uh, it does not read USB on the go devices. So you can't plug in a thumb drive and have it recognize. It just never pops up. Uh, yeah, disappointed about that, but okay. I'll have to manually put my music on using either the wireless app or using my phone, but yeah, I kind of wish it did have that feature. That would have been really nice and convenient to have, but okay, fine. Okay, so for you guys, it was a moment. For me, I've had this guy for at least like probably four, three to four weeks. And I use this quite extensively at work. You can see here, I uh, changed the wallpaper. Uh, we'll get to the, the features in a sec, but I just wanted to point out that the design language of this uh, model uh, is very similar to the um, the Finistech player. You can see here, just like the angles and the milled, um, like aluminum, anodized aluminum, the gold accents, the uh, glass front and back are very similar. I almost wonder if these are made by the same, maybe not necessarily the same manufacturer, but the same design firm or something. I don't know. Uh, but when I got the email uh, offering uh, from Loran to send this guy in for me, my mind immediately went to this uh, Finistech. This guy is almost perfect. I say almost. Um, so in testing that I've done, I basically loaded this. You can load your own APKs on, and there's a caveat to that we'll get to in a sec. Uh, but it comes with the high beam music, which works great. Um, I noted that on a smaller MP3 player that the interface was cramped. Here, when you load it up, you get plenty of real estate. This is a 5-inch screen, and it's actually 720p. So it actually looks really, really nice. Um, the CPU in this is actually pretty decent. Um, everything flies when you open. It's responsive. The touchscreen works great. Uh, just everything just feels really good. And it'll um, play just fine with everything. Uh, but the uh, thing that I wanted to um, point out, so yes, you can install your own APKs. Um, there was no issues with that. With the exception, there's no Google Play and thus no Google Play services. So while I can install uh, YouTube, so I'll just connect to Wi-Fi right now. This might take a sec. Uh, hopefully it recognizes. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now I'm connected to Wi-Fi. And it's apparently processing artwork for some odd reason. Uh, anyway, uh, I installed the YouTube app. So here I can open it. It says it won't run without Google Play services, yet I can see it load up in the background. So if this pop-up box didn't pop up to block me, I bet you the YouTube app would work fine. I don't blame necessarily the manufacturer on this. This is probably a Google sort of thing where it's not certified for use with, uh, yeah, you can see it started playing something and then as soon as you hit okay, it backs out. So it's definitely a limitation of um, like Google and the way that they certify different devices to work. So it's really unfortunate. This definitely like the screen, the audio, the processor is definitely up for playing YouTube videos. It's just Google won't let you, which is real stupid. Um, I would like to see maybe if they could push a firmware update that includes uh, Google, the Google Play Store and services, then that would remove pretty much kind of the biggest downside I see of this model. Um, that would make it, you know, way more usable in my opinion. Another thing that stinks, it doesn't work. I can open up, uh, I, so I installed like the live wallpaper services and I can almost, I can go to select one and then it crashes out. So I can never install live wallpapers on this, which stinks because I really like this Pixel Road 8-bit looking one. Uh, so those are things that don't work exactly. You can get around the YouTube thing by just going to a web browser and loading up youtube.com. So, uh, let's see, where did I move the web browser to? So I can just either use their browser or I install Chrome. Uh, both work just fine. So I can go to youtube.com. And it seems like decently fast. Okay, so here they're saying that uh, the inbuilt browser is too old. It does not like that. Let's try Chrome. This should be the newest version of Chrome, actually. It just had a link right here. <laughs> so yeah, you can see it loaded up. Let's just search one of my videos, SJM 
four three zero six trailer and while we're at it we'll turn up the audio and go full screen disable max out the audio the speaker is here gets decently loud and that screen looks so good <laughs> So yeah, definitely they did not cheap out on the screen. The speaker sounds a little tinny, but eh, you expect that for a device this small. But yeah. Sort of meta, isn't it? Watching my own trailer on a video that I'm filming. Anyway, uh, yeah. Just uh, turn that down a bit. Screen looks really good. As this is a 720p, even if we push it to 1080p, it's not going to look any better. And playing back video over something like um, uh, Google Chrome here works just fine. So it's just that the Google app doesn't work because it's missing the Play Store and all the supported libraries and stuff, which is a shame. I installed the uh, TubeMate like YouTube video downloader thing, and that works just fine as well. Uh, you can use that to either watch videos or to download them. And yeah. And uh, this guy, I believe, yeah, I have a lot of things open at once. I believe this guy has like three gigs of RAM, so you should have plenty of memory to, uh, to play with. So if you have more than one thing open at a time. Uh, I've used web streaming apps. Uh, yeah, let me make sure the volume's down. Um, Let's see, audios, I like listening to uh, web radio on here, loads up like real quick. It starts playing uh, pretty much immediately too. There's not like too much buffering. Uh, yeah, and we're in and it's playing right now. I just haven't muted so I don't get a copyright uh, content ID match. But yeah, it's this is a fast player and it works really well. Uh, battery life, that's the biggest thing that I was interested in because this is supposed to have... I think it was like a 5,000 milliamp hour battery according to the uh, documentation on the sales page. And so this has pretty much by far the longest like estimated battery life. I wasn't able to measure exactly, you know, without really cracking this open, I can't, you know, see what the markings on the battery are. Uh, but uh, for about one hour of listening, I noticed that the battery, and that was like with the screen on and me constantly like flipping through um, different tracks and like skipping and rewinding as well as um over bluetooth uh, i noticed for one hour it was about around a five percent uh maybe about four or five percent drop in battery life which would mean that this would run on average probably about 25 hours and 25 hours mind you with bluetooth transmitting the entire time and i may or may not have had wi-fi connected but i wasn't using wi-fi i was playing music off the sd card Pretty much the, the next uh, longest lasting player that I tested, here we go. It was the Pexu P5S, this guy. And um, this guy, I think, has a 2500 milliamp hour battery. And I tested with Bluetooth on. I think I was only getting like less than 20 hours of battery life on this, definitely. It was probably closer to about like 16 or 17 hours. So this already, um, you know, on average, from the way that I listen to music, which is just constantly like swiping through things. And if I don't like a track, I'll skip it. If I leave it on shuffle for the most part, this, I would say I would be pretty comfortable saying that this is going to get you at least like 25 hours of runtime off Bluetooth, um, playing off of, you know, music stored on an SD card here. Uh, so that's definitely a big plus. With wired headphones, uh, the drain was even like lower. It was ridiculous. I didn't bother even measuring it because it was kind of pointless by that point. Uh, but uh, Bluetooth sounded great. I don't know if this does. Uh, I wasn't able to actually get into like the developer mode. It looks like they disabled it for some reason. Uh, so I wasn't able to check the codec. I suspect it's like SBC. It sounds decent. Uh, when I plug this into IEMs though, uh, through the headphone jack, this guy sung. It sounded really nice. Maybe not as nice as like my high res uh, flak players, but uh, all my MP3s I stored are like 320 kbps, and this sounded really nice. And you know, having like a, a 
really good battery life to boot. I wasn't actually able to measure with wired headphones. I use this wireless most of the time. I generally don't like using wired headphones while I'm at work because I'll forget I have them on and go to stand up and walk away and like drop the player, or drag it from the headphone jack and rip out the cord. Generally don't like that. I work in like a electronic lab sort of thing. So generally wireless is the way to go in my workplace. Uh, but yeah, I mean, what can I say? This worked fantastic. Price is a little bit high uh, compared to something like the Pexu. I believe the Pexu was like somewhere around the $70 to $80 mark. This is a little more. This is uh, about $100 as of the last time I checked. Uh, but this includes a 64 gig micro SD card and a much bigger battery. Um, and the screen on this definitely seems a lot better. Uh, this isn't even the full brightness. This is about half brightness. If I just bump this up, that screen looks so nice. Uh, that was the biggest thing about the Pexu, the G5, the newer model of the P5S. Um, this guy had a good screen, not great, but good, was a little dim. The G5 that they replaced that model with, the screen just looked way worse. Uh, it was like, it was usable, but it's nowhere near, this screen just looks so much better. Um, if I did have to complain about anything about this player, uh, it would be the lack of the Google Play support, uh, the Google Play Store rather. And um, the power button seems a little easy to hit. If I uh, leave this locked in my pocket, oftentimes I will notice when I go to pull it out of my pocket that um, the screen's already on because I probably bumped the power button at some point. Uh, those are sort of nitpicks, and eh. I really like the design. It's really well made. It's it's a little chunky, but I I forgive that. Uh, give me a bigger battery over a Thunder device any day. I like the SD card is slightly recessed, which means you do have to use a fingernail to remove it, but you don't often have to remove it. Like the USB C connector, dual headphone jacks is always a plus in my opinion, uh, and just like the overall design is really nicely done. Um, now you're gonna have to ask yourself. Uh, if you are going to spend around $100 for a dedicated Android MP3 player, should you spend a little more and get one from like a large name brand or get maybe, you know, spend double the amount and get like a high res, really nice one? I can't really answer that for you. <clears throat> for something like the P5S or even like uh, this guy, the Finis Tech, uh, these I would be comfortable giving to a kid who like as his first mp3 player um this guy is a little bit too pricey in my opinion for that purpose uh this i would actually use as like a second mp3 player or a second smart device sort of replacement for uh, transmission distance on this seems about you know par for the course probably about 30 35 feet uh, unobstructed so you're not going to really have much of an issue as long as it's generally near where you are uh, yeah, Wi-Fi, uh, the signal strength is also pretty decent. That's the problem with some of these smaller models that I've tested. The Wi-Fi is hit or miss. You'll have connection and speed issues, but this seems to work just fine. Like I said, I use this for um, using the Audios app in Pandora, uh, listening to web radio, and I had no issues with that. Now, I did note uh, the battery drain did seem a little bit faster when uh, connecting you know, uh, to streaming media. Uh, using Wi-Fi, I didn't exactly measure that. That's not something I, most of the time I listen to local music, um, whatever is stored on the SD card here. I have pretty much filled the SD card on here though. So 64 gigs isn't a lot, but luckily you can get like a 128 gig card for like 12 bucks-ish now. Uh, I believe Micro Center has them, so you can definitely get them for pretty cheap and um, it's definitely a worthy upgrade. For something like this. The 64 gigs is a decent starter memory. Now this only has 32 gigs internal, which is meh if I'm being honest. Um, but really all you need the internal memory for on like these Android units is for installing apps. And because this doesn't support Google Play, you're not going to generally be installing like large apps or anything like that. You could probably emulate on this, um, but I don't see this pushing, you know, really past like PlayStation 1 games, that kind of stuff. So as an MP3 player, I would definitely give this uh, low-end model a uh, definitely like a A minus B plus sort of score. Uh, it's not perfect. It's a little bit pricey, but 
Uh, if I had to compare it directly with what is out there on the market right now, it definitely performs better uh, at a higher price, albeit, but it definitely punches above um, the average right now, uh, which you would expect given the price of about 100 bucks. So not cheap, but I'm actually really happy with this. Uh, works absolutely fantastic. Design is great. Uh, really happy with like the overall uh, set of features. Oh yeah, forgot to mention the standby power is really good. Um, I've accidentally left this on for like days, come back to it and only notice like two to 3% battery life a lot um, lower. Uh, overall, really happy with this. If you guys are looking for a uh, MP3 player that you can use just as a dedicated standalone, not your cell phone, um, I would definitely check out the, uh, the low end here. Um, this model in particular is the N2. Yeah, so anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I've rambled on for already like close to 20 minutes. Thanks to Loran for sending this in for review and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.